Welcome to TK Tennis. This is part one of should you try and hit a forehand like a professional? And you might ask, what does that mean? It simply means, can you consistently hit a forehand with topspin in the same form and style like a professional does? And what are the two prerequisites to being able to hit a forehand like a professional? Now, whether it's Alcaraz here, Sinner, Grigor Dimitrov, or any other top pro, in this video, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of some footwork items that you need to be able to do and that every single pro does consistently in order to hit their forehand like they do. But instead of showcasing one of the top pros, instead we're going to pick an aspiring tennis professional out of Japan. His name is Takiyua Kumura, and he has a YouTube channel as seen here. So maybe we can give him some love and some additional subscribers. Let's take 30 seconds to watch this clip. Now that's poetry in motion. All right, let's first talk about the two prerequisites that you need to have in order to even consider being able to hit a ball similar to this at your level. The first one is his grip. In order to hit a topspin forehand like this, you have to have a forehand grip that is spin conducive. And that means it needs to be a semi-western or western grip, or at least an aggressive eastern grip. That's required to hit a topspin ball in the modern tennis game. The second requirement or the second prerequisite is are you fleet of foot enough to be able to get in position and hit the ball properly? And how do you know if you're fleet of foot enough? One clear indicator is can you skip rope? If you can jump rope consistently and well, you have fleet you are fleet of foot enough. If you can't jump rope and you think you probably could with some practice, if you would like to improve your tennis game, there is no single exercise that will help you improve your movement and your positioning better than jumping rope. And for as little as $6 on Amazon, you can buy a jump rope and within days you will notice a difference on the tennis court. If you are not fleet of foot enough, being able to hit anything remotely like this will be close to impossible. That's sort of my baseline gauge. If you can jump rope, no matter what your age, you can have footwork similar to a professional tennis player. Now let's talk about the importance of a closed stance or an open stance. So 80% of the shots that you saw him hit were with an open stance. And let's review that right here. So when we roll this forward and we stop right here, we will see this open stance. His left foot is not over here. His left foot is to the left of his right foot. This is an open stance. So again, 80% of your shots will be with an open stance. And this is preferred because it allows your hips and your shoulders to fully rotate around your body more efficiently than if you were in a closed stance. Additionally to the open stance, look where all of his weight is. His weight is entirely on his right foot. His knee is bent and all of his weight is driving off of his right foot. This is another requirement in order to hit a forehand like a professional. With an open stance, all your weight will be on your back foot, not on your front foot. Now as we roll it forward, you'll notice that he's driving up with his right foot. His knee is starting to extend and he drives up over the ball. Now we're not going to talk about forehand technique in part one. We're just talking about the footwork and the reminder to be mostly in an open stance. And notice how no weight is on his front foot as he makes this shot. Okay, now we're going to watch another open stance shot. As he's moving to his right, notice that the ball is coming high over the net and it's landing deep into the court and it's going to be bouncing up high. So as we stop right here, you can once again see that all of his weight is on his right foot and then he drives up and over the ball. Then we're gonna watch one other shot. Again, with an open stance, as he's moving, the right foot goes out first, all of his weight is on his right foot, the ball is high, and he rips over the ball 
once again. Now on this shot, we're going to watch him hit a closed stance and understand why is he closing his stance. Well, quite simply, the ball is going lower over the net and it's going to land shorter into the court, which means he's going to need to move forward or step into the ball. So the general rule is if the ball is low and you have to step towards it, you're going to close your stance. But any ball that is coming deeper, faster, or higher is going to be hit with an open stance. So here you're going to see the ball land short into the court and he needs to move towards it. He still gets on his right foot, but then he transitions into a semi-closed stance and now he's into the court. So basically he had to move to the ball and drove from his right foot into his left foot. That was only because the ball was out in front of him and lower than the typical shot. Now once again, on the very next shot, the ball is deeper and it's going to bounce higher and it's coming at him faster. So in this case, he will take an open stance. There it is. And he drives up off of the right foot and whips over the ball with a wrist lag. And one more time, open stance. Notice all of his weight is on his right foot with his right knee bent and there is no weight on his left foot. All right, and then we'll take a look at one more shot. Notice how low the ball is coming over the net. It will land shorter into the court. So he steps into it with a closed stance and again drives the topspin over the ball. So it's really quite simple. If the ball is out in front of you and you need to reach towards it, of course you will step into the ball. But any ball that's faster, deeper, or higher should be hit with an open stance. And hitting with an open stance, as you see him doing here, allows him to get incredible torque off of his leg through his waist and then through the shoulder. This might seem like common knowledge to a lot of people and a lot of players, but we often forget that everything starts from your footwork. If you're not weighting your right foot and you're not generally hitting with an open stance on the majority of your shot, you will not be able to hit a forehand like the pros do. If you are fleet of foot enough and you remind yourself to push off your back foot and keep an open stance, hitting a forehand similar to a pro is achievable on a regular and consistent basis. So that concludes part one of how to hit a forehand like a professional. So if you'd like to improve your tennis game, my tip is to go out and get a jump rope and start skipping rope. I promise you within just a few days, you will notice a vast improvement in your ability to position yourself on the court. If you've enjoyed part one, let me know in the comments. I'll do a part two video highlighting the most important checkpoints on your forehand stroke. I hope this was helpful. Go out and play some tennis, skip some rope. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and I'll see you in the next days.